The Flinders Ranges is one of Australia's iconic natural landscapes, recognised for its rugged beauty, ancient history and sense of spirituality. The diverse landscape covers an area of more than a million hectares, stretching from the coast of Port Pirie in the south to the edge of Wilpena Pound in the north. Habitats range from arid ecosystems, Mallee scrub, nationally endangered woodlands, sugargum forests and grasslands, to ephemeral creek systems flowing from the hills across the plains to seagrass meadows and mangroves. The Living Flinders project area contains some of Australia's most ancient natural landscapes, supporting an incredible diversity of plants and animals, and is recognised nationally as a biodiversity hotspot and an important nature links corridor. Where can I start with such a complex system as the Flinders Ranges? Basically, it's the story of life on Earth contained within the Flinders Ranges. It's reasonably easy interpretation if you follow the gorges through the Flinders, which cuts through the sedimentary rock and shows us hundreds of millions of years of history on the planet. It's fairly diverse here in the southern Flinders, a real crossroads of climate, which of course results in a crossroads of different species that exist here. So you've got a lot of species that exist further south in the Mount Lofty Ranges here, as well as species that are from far northern Flinders. Now I've worked right through the Flinders. You kind of tend to get very connected to it. Yeah, it's a place that really draws you in and a very special part of the world really. Yeah. Those places are really special, they're little treasure troves of biodiversity really, they're wetter areas, those rocky gorges tend to be like that. I think the other part about them is, once again, like the reserve system, they've often been treasured by local members of the community for a long time. These places that sort of reach back into our history, such as this old shepherd's hut, they give us a fantastic opportunity to connect people with the landscape. Often people don't uh, really connect to the land but uh, these kind of places give us that context so people can uh, can come here uh, provide the destination they get an understanding and an interest in the area and then that overflows to an increased interest and in, in understanding of the biodiversity around them. I love the feeling of being in a remote isolated position but yet still close to the rest of civilization a place where people can go and go back to living with nature, the great uh, landscape and the diversity of animal and plant life is something you can't get anywhere else. I think even city people have a real affinity with the Flinders Ranges. They're quite spectacularly beautiful. I've seen people become really quite emotional about them, even though they've only visited there the once. And they are quite spiritual for me. I think it's one of the most beautiful places that I've seen in Australia. Really special, needs to be looked after and loved by all of us. The Southern Flinders Ranges is also home to nationally endangered plant and animal species, including the vulnerable yellow-footed rock wallaby. The yellow-footed rock wallabies have increased exponentially. They have now gone to areas where National Parks and Wildlife surveys show they haven't been for the last 30 years. So they're spreading out and that's some of the reasons why the corridors are there to link up the other land systems that this property is in the centre of. Every farmer practices conservation, whether they'll admit to it or not, they practice it. And it's necessary for their survival. So that's something we need to do and that's through education and just talking to each other and, and, and getting through it. The Living Flinders Project aims to bring all the community together to protect the special features of our region. We're in a beautiful peppermint box grassy woodlands, one of three ecosystems that are protected nationally because it's so rare and so important for our region. It's home for many woodland birds like robins and tree creepers and Jackie Winters. They're very special places. Over the hills on the Gulf, it's an important breeding ground for many fish and also a resting place for migratory birds that pop in on their way down from the Northern Hemisphere. This is a very special place and it's very important to protect it. But land management practices of the past have put increasing pressure on the biodiversity of this spectacular region. Introduced invasive plant and animal species and weeds have compounded the naturally occurring effects of drought, wind and rain. 
In the 50s and the 60s, there was a lot of clearance, timbered areas of woodland. A lot of birds have gone. I can remember hearing bush stone curlews calling at night when I was a child. Haven't heard them for probably 40 years now. Not just the curlews, but a lot of other birds have gone. And the trees are older. I can think of those trees at Mount Remarkable, those big red gums just north of the town. They were like that when I was a child. They're old trees. And how long are they going to last? You know, there's a lot of old trees in the landscape. I worry about what it's going to be like in another 50 years. The goat threat's a big thing here, particularly directly relating to the elephant rock wallaby colonies where they can spoil the waters, but also you know, inhabit their, their cave areas and their rocky areas. The feral goats eat the vegetation, they foul the water and they disturb all the native animals. We also have problems with foxes and cats eating birds and reptiles and insects. The special features of the Flinders Ranges are threatened by weeds such as boxthorn, bridal creeper and wheel cactus. We need to control these weeds to protect the ecosystems that are here. The other thing that we need to work together on is fire management. Fire needs to be controlled, but it can be used to manage our beautiful ranges. The Living Flinders Project addresses these critical issues by bringing together local landowners, non-government and government organisations. The Living Flinders Project Group includes Greening Australia, the Wilderness Society, the Nature Conservation Society in partnership with the South Australian Department of Environment and Natural Resources and the Northern and York Natural Resources Management Board. The development of a common ecological vision between these partner organisations and local communities is well advanced through a collaborative conservation action planning process. Look, I think the whole concept of this being a partnership is really vital. It's what it's all about. We as country people don't like to be dictated to. I've lived and worked in the country all my life and I know very well that if we can have the expertise of outside but take ownership of this, use it as a bottom-up approach, then it will be successful, but we have to have that cooperation in order to get the collaboration, which will be successful for the Flinders Rangers and for this entire project. It's really important to work with private landholders in biodiversity conservation in the southern Flinders because they actually own the majority of the resource the land that's got the remnant native vegetation and the wildlife habitat on it. So if we can work with private landholders and help them to find out about what they've got on their properties, what sort of things are impacting on the vegetation and the wildlife and any steps they can take to protect those species and ensure their survival, then we're doing a lot for actually achieving our conservation of biodiversity in the region as a whole. Probably one of the areas critical for conservation is this the conservation action planning process is really important because it looks at the assets we've got within the landscape and then puts some sort of order as to how we're going to approach the conservation of those assets. It gives us some priorities to work towards. If there is funding available, it also allows us to really just pick out where we're going to do the work. It's a tool to use in that way and I think it's absolutely critical. Local landowners Warren and Jane Luckcraft are proud to be involved with the Living Flinders project and have devoted their lives to improving the biodiversity of the landscape and by so doing are benefiting from an improved bottom line. We also have a tourism venture on the property which we have run now for 10 years and it runs alongside the pastoral business. Uh, sometimes they conflict a little but it has meant that we have a cash flow when we don't have it from the pastoral business and we have managed to have it in a sustainable way so that it doesn't hurt the environment and we've actually found that the tourists are sometimes less detrimental to the environment than the sheep. Australians are actually really lucky. We have the opportunity to protect and preserve our wildlife and landscape on a scale that others can only dream of and we're lucky that we have so much that's still able to be saved. The Living Flinders project covers 1.3 million hectares of internationally significant landscape. It's a national hotspot for native plants and animals part of Nature Links and the Transcontinental Ecolink, a recognised iconic landscape for tourism, a site of major cultural significance for all Australians, and it's also at a turning point when it comes to conservation. We realise there's not a bottomless pit of money to do this work, so we have to be really strategic and really give it some thought about where we put our effort in. 
And that might be that there's areas that are now protected that perhaps have less attention than areas that are not protected. So we need to really think about the whole landscape, the assets within the landscape, and then prioritising where we're putting our efforts. So I think that's probably the big change. How we get there is a different matter, and also we don't want to erode the gains we've made with the reserve system. So, yeah, it's a tricky one really, but I think we need to push the boundaries. The best thing about Living Flinders is that we have a plan. Everyone's already got together and agreed on what needs to be done. We know in detail what the threats are and the actions we need to take to make sure this place remains intact and sustainable for the next thousand years. It will cost around $30 million and it will take 10 years to deliver. That's $3 million a year. But what we get is a 10-year investment of time and money that will still be paying us back in a thousand years. That's a great deal and it's not really that hard. All we need are people who have the ability to share and support the vision. That person could be you. The Flinders Ranges is just such a beautiful looking region really and who can resist being amazed by the landscape that's got such rugged ranges and a range of colours, red soils, green vegetation, blue and purple looking ranges. It's very dramatic. I just couldn't believe how I'd forgotten how beautiful that area was and it just felt like coming home. So yeah, it's a pretty special country. How I'd like to see the landscape in the future and I guess really the dream for the Flinders over the next 30, 40, 50 years is one where we can bind our conservation effort with people. We've moved it forward, we've had a lot of gains, we've got more areas protected, whether that's parks or, or non-government areas. But I think connecting to the community better and particularly bringing the Indigenous communities along with us is important. The Indigenous people's input goes back way, 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 so a long time ago. So it's something that really makes it special here in the Flinders. Our goal is to leave it in a lot better condition than we found it. And we have found that by teaming up with others, we can make this happen. And we can see the improvements year by year.